Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome back to my shop. In this video, we're going to talk about a hollowing rig called the Stabilizer, made by Trent Bosch Tools. Okay, so we're here to talk about the Trent Bosch Stabilizer, and uh, we're going to go over uh, setup um, and um, how to get your uh, hollowing bars installed on the tool itself. Um, I opted for the laser system in this uh, in my setup, so. You're going to see the laser system installed. I wasn't going to take it off just for the video, um, but that is a separate purchase, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And um, um, at the end, we'll, I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like about the uh, um, the hollowing jig itself, and then we'll talk about the um, you know pricing and stuff. So um, keep watching. Okay, so here we're getting ready to set up the stabilizer on our lathe, and um, I'm going to pop out the tool rest. All right, and then we're going to take the stabilizer, and you can see here's the post, right? And then here's the stop collar, and we'll talk about how to adjust that stop collar in just a minute. We're going to drop that right in the banjo where the tool rest would go, and there you go. Installing a hollowing bar on this system is pretty straightforward. Uh, so you're going to need a hollowing bar, and this is uh, drilled for a three-quarter inch size hollowing bar since I bought the three-quarter inch stabilizer, okay? And you would just insert your hollowing tool or hollowing bar into the hole. And of course, we want to make it so the tip of the tool is flat, you know, and in, in the right position for hollowing, all right? And then... There was a set screw here, and you get this wrench that they provide you, right? And we're just going to lock that down. So here you can see the bit of the hollowing bar that I left sticking out. And so we're going to take a handle and just slide it on. And then we're just going to tighten up, at least for me, tighten up the set screw on the handle. And then we're good to go. Okay. So now the setup for here is pretty much done with the hollowing tool. Okay, um, if you had a, a wooden handle hollowing tool, as long as your tool was a straight tool, um, you could just have slid it through the hole and then tightened up the set screw that's on my side. Um, it might have been a little bit of a trick if you had uh, um, a tool with a hook. I don't know if that hook uh, is going to make it through there or not. Uh, I've never tried that, so um, I always slide my tools in the way that I showed you here. So the goal here at this point is to get the tip of the tool to line up dead center with the spindle. All right, so you can see here I have the um, um, drive center uh, put in the spindle and we got the tip of the tool lined up. I mean, I already have this all lined up, but to accomplish that the first time, what you need to do is, is we're gonna loosen this set screw on the stop collar and then just slide that stop collar up and down until we get the tip of the tool lined up directly dead center on the spindle. And then once we have that done, we can then tighten up this set screw, uh, lock that stop collar in place, and then that's a one-time adjustment, and then every other time you'll just be able to drop the post right into your banjo where the tool rest goes. So here you are back um, at the lathe with my head cut off so I could get this full jig into the shop. Um, so let's just talk about the different parts here real quick. Um, we have obviously the tool holder area here. Um, and that tool's hold in with the one set screw like we showed before. And if you have other than uh, three quarter inch hollowing tools, um, this rig comes with adapters for half inch and five eighths. Uh, then we have the articulating arm, okay? The articulating arm is how you can get the tool positioned so you can do your hollowing, right? So we have a lot of movement with that. And then here, this piece here, this is basically your tool rest, okay? So there's no tool rest adjustment necessary at all with this, okay? Once you drop it into the banjo and set it up, you're good to go. This should be right on center all the time, um, unless you change the size of the hollowing bar. So yeah, and then when there's these posts that come uh, with the, um, the jig, and um, 
I just, they just give you some stops so you won't fall off the end or, you know, if you want to use some leverage or, you know, you have certain areas like you don't want to have it dig in too deep or for whatever reason you'd want to use these, I generally don't use them at all, but they're there and available, okay? And then this is the laser setup, which is optional, but I opted for the laser setup. Okay, I changed the camera so we could see how I'm going to have to swap out this tool, right? And I've only lock down one of these so i'm going to remove the handle all right now you can't see the set screw that i'm loosening from my side but i'm going to loosen this one set screw and then i'll slide out this three quarter inch bar all right and what we're going to do is we're going to replace it with a half inch all right so i'm going to need this half inch adapter and this has a hole in it all right, for the set screw, so I'm going to have to line that up to the set screw on my side. All right, and then I can put the half inch tool in the adapter. And you're going to leave enough sticking out so we can put a handle on. Make sure that that tool is nice and level. And when I say the tool nice and level, I mean the cutter. The cutter should be, the top of the cutter should be parallel with the you know, flat, according, you know, in relation to the bed of the lathe, right? So we're going to tighten up that little set screw. And now that's installed, and I can put a handle on, but I'm not going to for the demo. I'm sure you could understand me putting a handle on. Um, and I don't have this sitting flat. So there we go. Um, but then, and then it would go over here uh, um, and use the same... Um, tool rest. Okay, but then we'll run into a little bit of a problem uh, because I just changed the size of this tool and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, since I changed the size of the hollowing bar, you know, this was initially set for a three quarter inch bar. Now I've got a half inch bar on here. So you can see I've created the gap and, and we can't have that, right? Because that's just going to create a lot of vibration. Okay. Um, so if you're going to change the size of the hollowing bar on this jig, what you're going to have to do then is find a way to lower this articulating arm. Okay. So the bar sits flat on the tool rest. Okay. I've turned this jig around so you can see the set screw that, you know, clamps the articulating arm onto the post, um, you know, that holds the tool in the banjo, right? So you would have to loosen this and then lower the whole articulating arm until the tool actually then rests on the tool rest itself, okay? And now that we've lowered that center point for the cutter, we're going to have to then readjust the stop collar to bring the tip of the tool back on center with the uh, spindle of the lathe. So you can see that even though you can use uh, different size hollowing bars uh, with this hollowing jig, um, it's probably a good idea to kind of pick one and stick with it, at least for that project, right? Um, it really is a lot of adjustments uh, trying to get that um, tool back on the tool rest and then recentered. If you're going to be swapping the different um, diameter hollowing bars out, you know, midway through your project. So I moved the camera around so you can kind of see from uh, more from my perspective uh, how to you would go about adjusting this laser um, for the tool that you have installed here, right? So there's two adjustments, okay, and you know, with the provided Allen key, um, you can just loosen this set screw here. And that will let you then basically pivot the laser itself, okay? And let's just tighten that back up real quick. And then to slide it, you know, in or out, depending on which tool you're using and where you need that laser to be pointing at, right? There you go. You just loosen that set screw and then you can slide this bar in and out. Okay, to make setting up your laser easier, uh, when you buy the jig, um, you get this card and you can see that if you lay your tool, you know, so the tip of your tool 
is kind of right in the center there, you have guidelines that go around that tool so you can position the laser. Okay? And then you just use the card to assist you in positioning the laser on the right side of that tool. Uh, you know, or, or I should say on the proper side of that tool, depending on what part of the vessel that you're hollowing out. Okay, here you can see a close-up of the laser itself. And I mentioned earlier there was some set screws. And here's two of them to adjust the actual position of the beam for some fine adjustment. You know, once you've used the, the coarse adjustments from the articulate or from the crossbar, right? Uh, up top here is the button, you know, to turn it on and off. Okay, and you unscrew the top and to replace batteries, okay? Okay, so the laser in this jig uh, takes a stack of three of those little button, you know, watch type batteries. Um, um, so I, it, it's pretty simple, straightforward, just unscrew the cap, drop them in, and, uh, and you're good to go. And I, I know it's three specifically because I was going to show you the laser turning on with the switch and the batteries were dead. So unfortunately, uh, I guess I have a tendency to bump that. Um, or leave it on and it drains the batteries. So that's just my own stupidity, right? Okay, so now we have this all set up, ready to go. Laser all set up, ready to go. Um, got the laser all adjusted and then we're, we're ready to start hollowing. So um, a few things that uh, um, I guess I should mention um, before we jump into, um, I'm actually taking a look at this piece um, um, or this with a piece on the lathe, right? So a couple things, right? This, this setup itself, and I'm gonna stand up because it's hurting my back, right? So this setup itself uh, really lends itself more to sliding the entire thing down to the end of your lathe, okay? So you take this entire rig with your banjo, slide it all the way down to the end of your lathe, and I know you can only do that if your headstock will also slide down to the end of your lathe, right? So, but because of where the handle goes and for you to use this handle and to get the leverage, I, you know, here I am, I'm reaching probably about a foot and a half across the bed of my lathe. Now I know you can't see it, it's out of the shot. Um, and I have to apologize. I only have a limited amount of space in my workshop here. So I really, and I, I wish I had more of a wide angle on the camera, I just don't. So, um, but it, if I had my lathe up against the wall, the handle would be hitting the wall, okay? And that would not be ideal, right? So um, um, maybe shorter handle could solve that problem, um, um, you know, um, or position your lathe so you can, you know, stand down at the end if you do have a lathe that has a movable headstock. Okay, so from this view, you can see, and I don't want to get in the way, so, I mean, if I had my arm over here, you wouldn't be able to see half of what I'm trying to show you, so. Um, but you can see as if you're hollowing the inside of this piece, and yes, I have a straight tool on here, if I was using the hook tool, or if this piece was a little bit wider, this angle might even be a little bit more severe, right? But you can see the handle of this piece is sticking out significantly past the bed of the lathe, right? Like I said, the handle was a little bit shorter, maybe not so much of a problem, okay? But, I mean, that's the way that this system works. Like I, say, and like I said, th this really lends itself really nicely if you can take this whole thing and slide it down to the end of your lathe and stand down there and hollow. Okay, here you can see that I've actually repositioned this entire thing down at the end of my lathe, and I'm lucky that I can swing my tailstock out of the way instead of having to pull it completely off the lathe. But you can see I slid the head down to where I'm working and I can stand down at the end of the lathe and I have a really good amount of um, um, control, uh, a lot of room to move around so I can do whatever hollowing necessary. I have a you know, good sight for the laser. I can see everything that's going on and I'm in really in a really good position here to really turn a, a vessel, a large size vessel, um, small vessel, whatever, very comfortably down at the end of the lathe. Once you have the laser set to the right gap, you know, depending on which side of the piece that you're working on, right, 
um, and you know which tool you have in here and I just have the street hole tool in here just you know as an example right now you'd be able to hollow and the laser will guide you and show you the wall thickness as you're going and as you get closer yeah this piece is completely finished right so but as you get closer to the edge right you'll see that the laser once it drops off the wood now you're at the right depth and then you can smooth those cuts out and then work 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 actually it'd be from top to bottom right so work 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 smooth that out work 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 smooth it out and take that all the way down to the bottom okay so um that's pretty much a uh, an overview right so uh some likes and dislikes um um, what I really like about this jig is I like the ease of its setup, right? So, I mean, you literally just pull your, your tool rest out of your banjo and drop this in. Once it's set up, it's pretty much set up um, for whatever size toolbar that you had on there last, right? Now, I have to say that whichever size toolbar you had on there last, right? So, and we saw from before that can potentially be a problem, but I mean, I'll, I'll hit on that a little bit in the dislikes right so but yeah I, I like that the easy setup I mean that's great um, um, I like the laser the on and off of the laser a uh, very simple battery power um, maybe not my favorite um, but it's nice not having a wire right um, that wire sometimes gets in the way um, for my other uh, jig that uses um, AC outlet so um, yeah sometimes it's nice just not to have to worry about you know that wire um, um, being there and just getting in the way so um, I also like that I can take this whole thing and slide it down to the end of the lathe right um, once this is set up and uh, I primarily use this for um, the largest pieces that I do um, so I have it set up and I don't have to make any adjustments back and forth with the jig you know to reach into the um, um, you know the deepest corners or or anything like that I mean it's just usually it's set it up once and I pretty much can stay right there right at the end of my uh, uh, lathe and I can just you know hollow so I, I really like that that's really nice okay um, and and the thing's built like a tank I mean it just it really is built like a tank super stable um, and you know and I mean it, it is what it is right I, it it really is just built like it's bulletproof okay so okay so now with that said um, um dislikes right um if you like to swap your hollow and bar sizes you know midway through the piece um yeah uh, this is going to be a little bit of a problem right it's going to have to make some adjustments and then recenter everything to get it all lined up again uh um, definitely can slow down your f workflow if you know you're in a groove um, I mean it's not super pain in the butt but it, it you know it definitely could be easier right so um, swapping out the tools themselves right going from a straight tool to a hook tool it, it, it just seems like there's a lot involved um, you know compared to another jig that I have where it's just you know you just loosen the set screw and pull the tool out and put a new one in this one I'm removing a handle loosening a set screw removing it putting a new one in putting the handle back on it just I mean it's it, it's you know maybe I'm just spoiled you know maybe that's it right so um, but you know I'm gonna list my likes and dislikes right so um, the laser um, um, although I, I, I like the laser, I like the precision of the laser, um, I do not like the way you make the adjustments on this laser. Uh, we have a set screw at the bottom that basically pivots the whole unit, and then one at the top um, that, you know, adjusts the length. Um, um, it is, uh, um, it, it's a little bit finicky. Let's just say that, right? So it's a little bit finicky. Uh, it takes me a while to get it dialed in. Once I get it dialed in, I mean, you know, the whole thing's rock solid. So, you know, I don't want to, you know, really kind of, you know, too much negative. But I, I, like I said, maybe I'm just spoiled, right? Because different system, much easier to set the laser up. So, um, yeah, so I think those are, uh, um, um, you know, some of my... Uh, likes and uh and and biggest gripes about the system um i mean the thing's great you know 
Um, I have two, and I have two for a reason. And, you know, it's, I'm not looking to get rid of one, so it's not like, you know, I, I really like, you know, this one is better and I'm going to get rid of one, or this one's better, I'm going to get rid of the other. Uh, they both serve a purpose, so um, I'm... I, I really like this jig for turning my larger pieces. Um, I like it if I'm standing down at the end of the lathe hollowing. I, it's great for that. So, um, yeah, so that's about it. I have one more thing to talk about. Um, and I do not have the equipment. Um, but it is something that's offered by Trent Bosch for this setup. Um, and you pretty much could adapt something similar to just about any hollowing rig um, um, out there. But uh, the Trent Bosch version is called the Visualizer and I'm gonna have to steal some pictures off of uh, Trent's uh, website so I can show you what that's all about. And, um, um, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about how one of our members, um, Mike, has um, pretty much put together his own version you know of this and he's working on retrofitting a jig he's making you know with something extremely similar so um so yeah let's get into that so the visualizer is basically just a bunch of hardware that replaces the laser on your system with a video camera and a video monitor with the camera pointing straight down at the tip of your hollowing tool you can then outline the tip of the tool so when the camera is actually showing the vessel itself, you can see where the tip of the tool is in relation to the outside of the vessel. To buy that package, it's going to set you back about $775. So um, our vice president, Mike, has uh, done a little bit of research and has found a video monitor and a video camera. And you can see in this photo here, he has even retrofit that um, or come up with his own mount uh, so he can design his own very similar system. Okay, so, you know, there's, there's the visualizer and, and how that all works and, and also uh, a Mike's version of uh, the visualizer. I, I'm sure if you have any questions about the, the parts and everything that Mike um, um, put together so he could build his own, um, he'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, so, or you can check out the visualizer um, at Trent Bosch's website okay so but here I am I'm on uh, the website right now and I figured I would go through and uh, give you some pricing um, in case you're interested right the three-quarter inch stabilizer the one that I have here is four hundred twenty five dollars okay that's the current price of that okay there is a five eighth inch stabilizer so a little bit smaller right um, that is for $325, and that'll be for smaller size lathes and smaller size tools, right? Um, there's also a 5 8 inch uh, stabilizer that is specifically sized for mini and midi size lathes, okay? And that is uh, $325. And the laser system, if you were to opt in to buy the laser system, um, it is, uh, and they have a range here, which I don't really understand, but it's 180 to $185. So I guess it would depend on which version, um, of the, um, stabilizer that you're buying the laser for. Okay. Um, there's some other options in here too, about, you know, different size tool posts and, and stop collars. And if you have one version, how to convert it for a different version. So there's all that stuff that's also, um, available to check out. So, um, hopefully we'll be able to put a link to Trent Bosch's website, um, um, into the chat. Um, or if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the description for the video. Well, there's a look at the stabilizer. Um, um, hope you liked the video. If you have any questions, um, 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 just feel free to, uh, to ask. All right?